Guy Havard. Hey Stephen, um, I just caught your answer there about the two boys with illness. If you could just sort of clarify what the illness was and are they both available to start tomorrow? Yeah, listen, um, they've both travelled to the stadium this evening, they're both fine. We don't know whether they're strong enough to play, we'll have to see how they train and make decisions after that. Uh, nothing to be concerned about um, in, in regarding to pass all the relevant tests that they need to and uh, in that regard there's nothing to be concerned about so just whether they're well enough and feel strong enough to play the build up oh. to this game is obviously sorry, dominated sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry yani həm oyunçular oyna hazırdırlar mı dilər ki bəli stadiona gələ bilər amma məkdən sonra qərar verəcək ki həm oyunçular çıxış edəcəklər yoxsa yox amma testlərdən keçirlər heç bir problem narahatçı yox yoxdur sorry hər qay yeah, the build-up to this game has obviously been dominated by Callum Robinson's comments earlier in the week. Does he regret saying what he says now? You know, what I, what I can say is about Callum Robinson is that, you know, he's such a popular member of the squad. He's a breath of fresh air. He always comes in with a smile on his face. He's infectious. You know, he brings laughter to the dressing room. People love him. He's very... You know, he's, he has great qualities as a man, great qualities as a human being. Um, he has attracted a lot of criticism um, because he just came into a press conference and where vast majority of players don't answer, the, refuse to answer the questions. He was open and transparent and um, he has been vilified for it. But he is a terrific person and I think that all of the players would, would verify that. They really speak so well of him and you know he's a very very popular member of the squad Kanal Robinson met pod konferansındaki eee dediklerinden bağlıydı ki yani o dediklerinden peş pandı mı dedi ki eee o komandanın çok önemli takip hissesi de Gülariz adamdı her zaman eee yani ki müsbet enerji getirir müsbet keyfiyetlere məxsus oyuncu ve insandır eee çok tezgilerle karşılaştı ama eee o met pod konferansına gelerken komandanın başlarına fərqli olarak uh, and Stephen, has it affected the build up at all to this game? Not in the slightest. No, not in the slightest. Um, you know, I think preparation has been good. We had a couple of good days training in Dublin. We're delighted to get it. It was terrific. Um, we trained in Abbottstown Monday and Tuesday. Obviously, eight hour flight on Wednesday, so and the time difference, so that that. You know, the players had to adjust to that then um, with training yesterday. Uh, but we're looking forward, we're training the stadium this evening now, we're looking forward to it and we'll be absolutely ready for the game. We're very, you know, very excited about the game. We're looking forward to it. Preparations have gone well. And uh, now that has had no impact whatsoever. We'll end the uh, translation there, if that's all right. Uh, Ed Leahy, please. Ed Leahy. Ed Leahy. Hey, Stephen, how are you doing? Um, how are you doing? Just to talk about the match, I suppose. Um, looking at the game in Dublin, it was obvious that when Azerbaijan come out to play against you, uh, you have the capacity to create chances from the style of play that you're embedding the team. Well, on the flip side, if Azerbaijan are in with a chance of holding on for a result, they, um, we haven't shown the creativity or the composure to, to break through. Uh, so how confident are you that you've, you've improved the side in that sense? And, you know, where can the improvements come from just to get those uh, results? Well, certainly, there, you know, there were lessons to be learned from the game. I think both out of possession in that first half period and certainly in you know in possession in that in both halves in fact and I think listen we've learned some lessons from the game even though we did create the vast majority of the chances in the game and had we just been more clinical in front of goal we might even be having the discussion now but it was a good learning curve for us and we do need to improve on on that performance in certain areas and we will are determined to do that I think uh, um, 
there was a lot of good play in that match as well. We, we just, you know, obviously when Azerbaijan defended deeper in the second half and we pushed right on, um, a lot of our chances came from crosses. So we have to have the ability, you're right, you make the point, we have to have the ability to play through Azerbaijan. And uh, we acknowledge that, that that's something we have to improve. And uh, so that's, we're looking forward to the challenge tomorrow night because Azerbaijan are so good players. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but we're in a confident mood. We've had, you know, a strong last window with the performances against Portugal and Serbia as well. And I think we want to turn that, to turn the recent draws into victories uh, tomorrow night. That's the ambition. That's, that's certainly what we want to do. Just a quick follow up. I know you won't tell me who's playing, but uh, just in terms of what area of the pitch are you looking for? That, that unit to really grab the, the game with a scruff of the neck and, and influence and is there a added importance on set pieces and maybe shoot from distance in a game with this right um well listen no there's no there's no uh no specific policy on shooting from distance i think you have to play what's on you have to do you know you have to trust your instincts depending on the way the, the game evolves um set pieces are always a factor for both teams i think that that that's always a factor but in, in games i think uh, yeah we just want to we want to uh i think it'll be um an open game tomorrow night away from home here so there'll be space for both teams and uh hopefully we can maximize our opportunities in the way that we didn't in the aviva in the end we got the late equalizer but hopefully we can maximize the opportunities that we create We've only got a few minutes left, guys. So, Nathan, just the two questions and one from Damien, please. Hi, Stephen. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, Callum's press conference uh, has dominated a lot of conversations over the last few days. I'm wondering if it sparked any and many conversations within the camp and if you've got a better understanding afterwards as to why so many players are deciding not to get vaccinated. Yeah, uh, listen, it's a fair question. But it's one I'm not, you know, I'm not going to elaborate on everyone's individual private medical reasons. And I'm sure I don't know the full extent of everyone's reasons, or any of the players' reasons. Some of them have, have, uh, have valid reasons, some of them have beliefs. And, um, but the vast majority of the players are, are vaccinated. And um, it's not been a factor and hasn't dominated the conversation in the camp because we've been very focused on trying to win the game. And I understand Callum himself, for being sorry about upfront and honest, has been vilified, in fact. Um, on, you know, but he's been, he's a breath of fresh air in our in squad. Everyone really speaks so highly of him. Very popular member of the squad. Um, he's determined to, uh, you know, determined to do well, I think. He obviously it's well documented now that he's missed a number of games. So I think he's determined to grasp that opportunity and do himself justice and and uh, he is no doubt one of our better attacking players and looking forward to getting in, getting on the pitch and doing well tomorrow. I'm sure Callum didn't expect the last few days to go the way they did after the press conference. You talk about him being vilified. John Egan was in before saying that everyone was jumping down his throat. How has he dealt with the last few days and the uh, the conversations that he's been in the centre of? Yeah, no, he understands it, but he listen. He's very focused on the game. He's a professional, and he's very, very focused on the game. And uh, you know, he's uh, that. You know, that's that's the way. I think. I think he said at the time that he wasn't against the vaccination. He was never against the vaccination. He just he, he himself needed more time to consider for for different reasons, and that was uh, that was his viewpoint at the time. So you know we had to respect that, and I think um, he's just very much looking forward to the game. And one more from Damien, please. Yes, Damien. Just following on from Nathan's point, there, knowing, knowing Callum as you do, when he want to go out, or is your challenge to him to go out and answer his critics with what he does on the pitch? Not really. Uh, I think not really. I think. Uh, Listen, he loves playing the game. He's a very, he's a character, you know, very infectious character. Um, he's quite versatile and that he can play in quite a few positions. Um, he wants to make an impact. 
he you know he had a he hasn't been able to obviously play for us for a while and he did a terrific game in Serbia initially in our first game of the campaign so he's very very determined now to try and uh, do well tomorrow and, and uh, he scored a few goals recently for West Brom so hopefully he can take that into 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 the international game tomorrow night Okay, thanks guys. That's all we've got time to. Training starts in two minutes. So thank you very much guys. Thanks for attending.